The morning after his fifth birthday party, Alfie came downstairs to find his mother in her wash day clothes with her hair tied up on her head, boiling water in every pot on the range, looking just as unhappy as she had the night before. And not just the normal unhappiness she felt every wash day, which usually lasted from seven in the morning until seven at night. She looked up when she saw him, but didn't seem to recognise him for a moment. When she did, she just offered him a dejected smile. Alfie, she said, I thought I'd let you sleep in. You had a big day yesterday. Bring your sheets down to me, will you? There's a good boy. Uh, where's Dad? asked Alfie. He's gone out. Gone out where? Oh, I don't know, she said, unable to look him in the eye. You know, your dad never tells me anything. Which Alfie knew wasn't true, because every afternoon when his father came home from the dairy, he told Margie every single detail of his day from start to finish. And he sat there laughing while he explained how Bonzo Daly had left half a dozen churns outside in the yard without the lids on and the birds had got at them and spoiled the milk. Or how Petey Staples had checked the boss, cheat the boss, sorry, and been told that if he continued to complain, he could just go and find another job where they put up with guff like that. Or how Mr Asquith had done the poo to end all poos outside Mrs Fairfax from Number Four's house and her a direct descendant, she claimed, of the last Plantagenet King of England and meant for better places than Damley Road. If Alfie knew one thing about his father, it was that he told his mother everything. An hour later, he was sitting in the front parlour drawing in his new sketchbook while Margie took a rest from the washing. And Granny Summerfield, who'd come round for what she called a bit of a gossip, although it was really to bring her sheets for Margie to wash too, held the newspaper up to her face and squinted at the print, complaining over and over about why they made it so small. I can't read it, Margie, she was saying. Are they trying to drive us all blind? Is that their plan? Uh, do you think Dad will take me on the float with him tomorrow? asked Alfie. Did you ask him? Yeah, but he said I couldn't until I was older. Well then said Margie. But I'll be older tomorrow than I was yesterday, said Alfie. Before Margie could answer, the door opened and to Alfie's astonishment a soldier marched in. He was tall and well built, the same size and shape as Alfie's dad, but he looked a little sheepish as he glanced around the room. Alfie couldn't help but be impressed by the uniform, a khaki coloured jacket with five brass buttons down the centre, a pair of shoulder straps, trousers that tucked into knee socks and big black boots. But why would a soldier just walk into the living room? He wondered. He hadn't even knocked on the front door. But then the soldier took his hat off and placed it under his arm and Alfie realised that this wasn't just any soldier and it wasn't a stranger either. It was Georgie Summerfield. It was his dad. And that was when Margie dropped her knitting on the floor, put both hands to her mouth and held them there for a few moments before running from the room and up the stairs while Georgie looked round at his son and mother and shrugged his shoulders. I had to, he said finally. You can see that, Mum, can't you? I had to. We're finished, said Granny Summerfield, putting the newspaper down and turning away from her son as she looked out of the window, where more young men were walking through their own front doors wearing uniforms just like George's. We're all finished. And that was everything that Alfie remembered about turning five.